Not every great track has a great story behind it. In case of I Can Get No Satisfaction by Rolling Stones, you'll get a pretty awesome, almost fairy tale type of rock and roll story. Legend says that the main hooky reef came one night to Keith Richards in his flat in Carlton Hill, St. John's Wood. The idea was so strong that it made him wake up in the middle of the night, pick up his acoustic guitar and record it on his Philips cassette player. Keith described the recording as two minutes of acoustic guitar and then me snoring for the next 40 minutes. Today it is quite surreal to perceive the song as an attack on the status quo. But at the times, we are talking about the year 1965, Mick Jagger's sexual connotations and the negative view of commercialism provoked strong reaction among the older generation. So lesson time! Today we're gonna be grooving hard in Bill Wyman style in uh, Stone's I Can Get No Satisfaction. The, the pure genius of this bass line lies in the, in the notes. <laughs> yeah, well, man, that's such a revelation. I, I, I just tell you what I mean. The main riff, notoriously known, is played you know, It's this one, right? It's played in B, so we play three notes, B, C sharp and D. But the bass line starts from E. So you play E. Can you hear the difference? You know. So these two parts are together. And that's what makes uh, the song groove so hard. And uh, actually, what I discovered when I was listening to the track, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, just, I don't know, in the radio, well, I, don't, I don't know where, but I just realized I'm attracted to the bass line, actually more than to the guitar riff. And the bass line is quite prominent also in the mix. It's, it's there and it's driving the, the whole song through. And it's the combination of the tone. I like uh, that Bill Wyman, he's playing on a short scale basis. And he's playing with the pick. And uh, the combination of short scale bass, pick, and plus your meeting with your palm, it creates this tone. And you can really control the length of the notes. And uh, you can play that kick drum style of the notes, I, I, I would lo I love to call it, yeah. maybe too much. I can play it really open or okay so let's dig into the, to the main uh, bass riff. So I'm playing the seventh fret on A string like a note E then go to ninth fret 10 so it's F, F sharp G landing on A which is the seventh fret on a D string and then you go back so uh, the phrasing is like this so basically you are playing E minor scale, the first four notes up and the fourth notes back, you know. Cool. Then the verse part. Yeah, you're uh, playing three chords. It's E, A and B. So it's a it's blues progression. The structure is that you're playing two bars of E, two bars of A, and again two bars of E, two bars of A, and then the, the finishing cycle is like E, B, E, A. And then we go back to the riff and to the, to the chorus and, and the, the main hooky line which you play a lot in the song. So let's dig in into the uh, verse bass line. So here are our root notes, E, A, then we have uh, the B, B note here. So we're playing in, in this position, quite up high uh, on the neck and on the bass. So 7th fret on A string, it's E. 7th fret on D string, it's A. And 9th fret on D, and it's B. It's accompanied by uh, the 5th. So I'm using E, these two notes. So this is the root note. This is my 5th, but it's played 
octave lower, so it's actually this uh, interval, it's called, it, it's fourth, you know, so E, B, it's fifth, and E, B, it's fourth, because the, the B is played octave lower, so it's a reversed interval. But the function of it is, is the same. You're just basically beefing up the bass. So you play. Yeah? And the same on, on the it goes on A. So I play A, and this is my fourth lower, because it's like A, E, it's a fifth, and I play A, E, it's a fourth down, but basically it's the same function. function. <laughs> same function of the note. Satisfaction of the note. So the rhythm pattern in the verse goes like this. These are two rhythm variations you're playing basically and you're combining it. You, you can then uh, listen to the uh, original track and just make sure that you're playing it exactly as it is, but you don't have to. It's not, not that important. What is important, you keep this pattern, you know, in, in your right hand, yeah. That's one, yeah, so. This would be the verse played with this one pattern, but you're combining with the second one, which goes like this. So it means I'm, playing, I'm starting on the root note, and then coming back to the root note. I'm not staying on the fifth yet. And then you, when you combine those two patterns, sound like this. That's basically what you do the whole time in the verse. There's little, little variations. Yeah, so I play the whole verse uh, as it is. The structure is two times E, two times A, A, that's, that's the whole thing two times, and then at the end it's E, B, E, A, yeah? it there is there is uh, not much more in the song I would say that that's the whole baseline from I can get no satisfaction it's fun to play it sounds easy but to get the right uh, tone and the right vibe uh, is not that easy as with all the iconic songs and bass lines you really need to play it with with a proper uh, rhythm proper phrasing proper tone and mainly the vibe yeah, so just pay attention to the original track and try to play along with it as much as possible and get into the groove of Bill Wyman's, you know, brilliant, brilliant bass line. Have fun, see you next time.